This week, we're going to talk about NOAX, which are non-vitamin K agonist oral anticoagulants. That's kind of a mouthful, but basically, these are oral anticoagulants, so as opposed to heparin or low molecular weight heparin, that are an alternative option to warfarin or Coumadin. And there's two groups, the direct thrombin inhibitors, so that's dabigatran, and the factor 10E inhibitors, so that's rivaroxaban, apixaban, and adoxaban. And we basically use them to anticoagulate all the same things we would use for warfarin or heparin. So to prevent stroke and AFib and to treat DVT and PE. And they're really gaining popularity because unlike Coumadin, there's much less drug-drug interaction and less dietary restrictions, so it's much easier for patients to take. And they're just way more predictable as far as pharmacokinetics. So it's a fixed dosing based on renal function and much less monitoring, so the patients don't have to go in and get their INR checked every week. Okay, let's talk about the coagulation cascade to show you how the NOACs work. So as a reminder, here's the coagulation cascade, and we have Coumadin, which inhibits all the vitamin K-dependent factors, and there's tons of those. And we have heparin, which activates thrombin, and that inhibits 10 and 2, as well as 11 and 9. So in comparison, really, the NOACs are quite simple. We have the direct thrombin inhibitors, and guess what they do? They inhibit thrombin. That's easy. And the factor 10A inhibitors, guess what? Inhibit factor 10A. So those are fairly straightforward. With the factor 10A inhibitors, prothrombin can't convert to thrombin. And once we've stopped that process, so there's no more thrombin, we can't convert fibrinogen to fibrin. And then there's no fibrin available to form these nice fibrin links stable blood clots and the patient is free to bleed. Now in any patient who's on anticoagulants we have to think about what's going to happen if the patient has a hemorrhage that's life-threatening or maybe they have to undergo emergent surgery or procedure. We have to have some way to reverse what we've done to them. With Coumadin that option is vitamin K and heparin we can give protamine. So let's talk about what our options are for the NOACs. Now just as a reminder here are our categories. We have the direct thrombin inhibitors and the factor 10A inhibitors and I'll give you the good news first. With dabigatran, we have an antidote. It's idiracizumab. It's a monoclonal antibody, and dabigatran actually binds idiracizumab much better than it binds to thrombin. So we're okay there. But the bad news is, for the factor 10A inhibitors, we really don't have an antidote at this point. There is one in the works. We have indexinet alpha, but it's pending FDA approval. So at least in the U.S., we don't have any available options. So we have to use some different adjuncts. And the one that's most recommended at this point is factor 4 PCC, otherwise known as K-Centra. So the idea is we don't have anything that can directly reverse the factor 10A inhibitors. Instead, we're going to try to boost the coagulation cascade as much as we can so that hopefully a clot can form. And we're going to do that with the PCC. Now this is a concentrate of a bunch of the different clotting factors in the coagulation cascade. And the idea is if we can provide that external support that hopefully it can overwhelm the factor 10A inhibitors, the NOACs that we've given, and a clot can form. Now, just as a note, you can also give PCC to the patients who are on dabigatran as well. Now, just as a reminder, we need to do all the things we would normally do for a patient who's bleeding, even if they weren't on NOACs. So get great IV access, provide mechanical compression, send your labs, and call your consults early, especially your interventionalists. Now, if you don't have PCC available to you, just remember that we have other adjuncts out there. These are all worth trying, especially in the case of life-threatening bleed. Now, for the NOACs, is there any blood test that's helpful to us, maybe to tell us how likely the patient is to bleed or which NOAC they're on? Well, the simple answer is no. Dabigatran might have a little effect on PTT, but not in a very reliable way, and basically everything else, it's just not going to come back to us quickly enough that's going to be helpful in the emergency room. So send your basic labs, but there's nothing special for the NOACs. Now the last really important thing for NOACs is to determine the last dose that the patient took. And you can see here at the bottom that these all have a very short half-life, probably about 12 hours on average. So if it's been more than 24 hours since the patient took their last dose, we can pretty much assume that there's no further effect in the system. All right, let's review. So the NOACs are an oral anticoagulant option that is an alternative to Coumadin. And the two categories are the direct thrombin inhibitors and the factor 10A inhibitors. We're going to use them for all of the same normal stuff, AFib, DVT, PE. And we have to remember that if we need to reverse them for life-threatening bleed, dabigatran has an antidote. It's idiracizumab. For everything else, we just do our best and try to give factor 4 PCC. Remember to ask when the last dose was. If it's more than 24 hours, there's probably no further anticoagulant effect in the system. Thanks so much for joining us, and here are the references.